My name is Emma Mikowski, and this is a presentation regarding women in the medical field. I am a neurobiology major intending to go into neuropsychiatry, which is a career in the medical field. I will explore the adversities that women in the medical field face throughout their career, drawing on the concepts of the devaluation of women's work, the theory of gendered organizations, and the same gender referent theory to better understand the challenges that I may face in my professional future. As a woman entering the medical field, I would like to further understand why women might be able to be kept at a disadvantage in this area of work. After reading an article from a sociological inquiry, I was informed that American women doctors have been urban, upper middle class, highly qualified academically, and children of professional or managerial parents, which I relate to greatly. Yet women similar to me, as compared to male doctors, have lower incomes, fewer patients, and fewer memberships in professional societies. This inequality is not only for primary care physicians, female specialists also experience a lower income. I will ultimately face this issue as nurse psychiatry is a specialty profession in the medical field that focuses on the mental disorders that are attributable to diseases of the nervous system. The devaluation of women's work is a topic introduced by Vallis that states that as more females become centralized in a particular workforce, these employees receive lower pay because these occupations have become looked at in a biased way. There are two proposed reasons for why this occurs, the first being that as employers lower the job quality and wages of certain jobs, the male workers are able to leave these occupations for better opportunities, while female employees are not given as many opportunities and are therefore stuck in these poor jobs. It is possible that I will experience this in terms of male doctors being more likely to receive promotions, leaving female medical professionals as subordinates to their male counterparts. The second proposed reason for this phenomenon is that when women enter a particular workforce, the employers respond by reducing the pay of these occupations. This reason is more widely supported by evidence. This issue has been highlighted as women are entering the medical field more often in recent years, resulting in a more obvious pay gap because the women were greeted with lower pay. The issue is not as apparent but when the field was dominated by men. A separate theory regarding the gender pay gap is Acker's theory of gendered organizations. Acker argued that gender inequality is built into the fundamental structure of work organizations. Men are automatically perceived as the ideal employee due to their perceived lack of involvement in primary family care. Women are viewed as the caretaker of the household and are thought to not be as available to work due to their commitments to their families. Ultimately, this has resulted in employers expecting almost unlimited availability from workers. This is apparent in the ridiculous amount of time that medical schools require a student to invest in studying and working to the point where women, including myself, are forced to consider whether they will be able to attain the life goals that they have planned for themselves, like starting a family at a certain age and even having some time for leisure. Acker continues on to say that tasks such as dealing with confrontation in the workplace or tasks that require leadership are given to men more frequently than women because these tasks are viewed as more fitting to men. Therefore, men have more opportunities to show their skills and ultimately receive more promotions than women. Perhaps in my future, my male co-workers will be given the more demanding patients or will be tasked with leading the medical research projects. Furthermore, Acker highlighted how socialization out of the work environment is more likely to benefit men. Given that many high-ranking officials are men, these men are more likely to socialize with the other men in the workforce, setting the male employees up for better relationships with their bosses. The relationships that these men build outside of work will result in the men being more likely to promote other men. The same gender referent theory as discussed in the American Sociology Review focused on the perpetuance of the gender pay gap due to the lack of awareness of the issue. Women compare their salary to other women who they view as having similar characteristics to them. These women are unaware that these women they are comparing themselves to are also being underpaid. Therefore, they do not notice any discrepancies in pay. Ultimately, this leads women to expect salaries similar to other women, lowering their expectations as compared to men. This occurs more often in areas where females have little interaction with male co-workers because the women are not aware that there is a pay gap. Studies showed that when women were made aware of how much their male co-workers were being paid, they immediately raised their expectations for their own salaries. This is apparent in the medical field as female doctors are very aware of the pay gap because they are in constant contact with the male doctors that control the field. I am grateful for this awareness as I will be able to recognize when I am being paid unfairly in the future. <clears throat> The information discussed throughout this presentation has made it clear that I will be facing the challenges associated with a gender pay gap. The theories introduced in various sociological publications prove that I will be at an unfair disadvantage to men as soon as I enter the workforce, simply because I am a woman. The most important takeaway is that I work to stay aware of the issue as I continue in my professional career. If I continue to educate myself on my male co-workers' advantages, then I can hold myself to their standards and even work to prevent it from happening. It will be a challenge, but I will have the power to work against the issue and that I will face and make a change for the better.